You're tired of working day in and day out, trying to find new Boomer customers, chasing leads, doing whatever work comes your way and never getting to earn what you're worth. You do it because you love the work and you're passionate about serving the Boomers. We get it. What you need is more of the right Boomer customers for your business and more income for you and your family so you can grow your company and help more people in your community. Well, you're in the right place because this is Booming Your Bottom Line. Hello and welcome to episode 57 of Booming Your Bottom Line. Today is yet another owner's chat. And today we have with us our special guest, Karen Cook. Karen is a business owner in the St. Joseph area of Michigan, focused on providing occupational therapy, home remodeling for accessibility, and products to make people's lives easier as they grow older or encounter physical challenges. Karen's an occupational therapist, licensed builder, and a consummate entrepreneur. She founded and owns three businesses, Functional Homes, Inc., Barrier-Free Occupational Therapy, and Essential Luxuries, LTD. Now, Functional Homes, Inc. is an accessibility construction company with a mission to create home environments that are beautiful and that support people's desired lifestyle regardless of their physical or cognitive abilities. Barrier-Free Occupational Therapy compromises a network of occupational therapists who specialize in home accessibility, and work closely with builders. They apply creative therapy and technology solutions designed to remove barriers and help develop skills for full, active, independent, and safe lifestyles. And then finally, Essential Luxuries LTD is an online products retailer offering beautiful universal design products and adaptive equipment for home accessibility for builders, OTs, and clients. Wow, that's <laughs> that was a mouthful. Karen, thanks for being here with us today. Why don't you, uh, how would you elaborate on that? <laughs> <laughs> thanks for, saying, for getting all that in. Um, yeah. Basically, we started out doing um, accessible construction, doing a lot of wheelchair ramps, doing a lot of grab bars. People started to hear about us. We started doing... Um, kitchens, bathrooms, additions. We just started doing it all and adding people on to help us. Um, and so uh, a little bit about us is I'm an occupational therapist and then I started, um, I was a, in order to get through occupational therapy school, um, it was kind of, it was expensive. I thought it was my most expensive, was my biggest expense. It was housing. So I started buying apartment houses and fixing them up. And then um, I remember as I was doing that, thinking, wow, it would be great to be a builder, but that wasn't really where I was going. So I became an OT, and um, as things were going along, I had a friend, I started looking for a business opportunity, and I had a friend who, I'm a competitive sailor, so one of the guys on the crew was a builder, and he was doing wheelchair ramps, and that was pretty good money at the time. It was rental ramps is what it was aluminum rental ramps and um, we started talking and he said he gave he told me you know what um, I'll give you 25% of the take on any ramps you bring in or any other jobs you bring in and I thought well I'm an OT I know loads of people with handicaps so I just started bringing him jobs and um, after a while I was bringing him a lot of jobs and so he asked so I wanted to be partners in the business he wasn't really up for that so I started my own business and just started marketing functional homes and started bringing in my own clients. Um, he ended up uh, moving to Hawaii, so I just got another builder I started working with who um, had been doing accessibility actually for 35 years. So he taught me a lot of what I know today on accessibility as far as how to build. I ended up doing a lot of the building myself when we get really busy. So. Um, he taught me how to do the grab bars and build the ramps and all that sort of thing. Oh, so you're um, very hands-on then. Only when I have to be. The guys <laughs> are a whole lot better than I am. I just go out and help them if they're short. Right. So, you know, that typically only happens in the summer. Usually in the winter, thing, we got enough people to staff where I don't have to go out there. What? So that's how that's how we started, and then it just sort of grew from there. Um as far, that's where functional homes started. The next thing that came in for for me was barrier-free occupational therapy. There are a lot of different case managers and that sort of thing who needed home accessibility evaluations. 
And the beauty of the home accessibility evaluations is I get paid as an occupational therapist to do that. And with my OT license, I can bill insurance and I bill at $160 an hour for OT. And that made it really nice because I could go out, do the evaluation, bring one of my builders there. We cover the state of Michigan, so I have a lot of different builders. The builder and I will meet at the um, site. We'll do the evaluation together. You know, I figure out, you know, what kind of transfers the person's doing, where the grab bar should go, what would be best based on their transfers. Um, some people do standing pivot transfers, some lateral transfers. Some people are tall, some people are short. You know, as some people have a bad shoulder, they can't reach things. You know, I'm the one who figures out where things should go. And then my guys are the ones who, who figure out how to have it, how to do it. And so most of the guys I work with just say, tell me what you want to do. I'll figure out a way to do it. And then it's a perfect match. So when we go out and do the OT evaluations together that I'm billing under my OT license, it's nice because both the builder and I get paid for being there. And so sometimes the case managers will try to cut me out and just go straight to the to my builder, but they don't want to work without me because if they work without me, they're not going to get paid for a lot of what they do. Right. I can pay for a lot through the OT license. So that's where Barrier Free jumped in. And then we decided we started, um, you know, we the, we were doing more and more um, jobs, and we found even if someone's got someone to pay for the job for them they don't want it if it's going to look like a hospital. Right. And so that's where Essential Luxuries came in. I've sp we spent lots and lots of time researching um, what's, you know, what's an accessible sink. A wheelchair accessible sink has got to be seven inches deep or less. It's got to be plumbed at the back of the sink, not at the middle of the sink. And, um, and it should be installed as close to the front of the countertop as possible. So, you know, now... ADA sinks, they aren't the same as a wheelchair accessible sink. So we spent a lot of time doing research, figuring out what, you know, what is the kind of sink you need for a wheelchair and which ones look beautiful. Right. So that's where Essential Luxuries has come in. We started putting it online. And um, we just started, started the Essential Luxuries. Um, and we've got, I want to, they're products that are beautiful that you can work for the, work for the home. Um, We've, we're going to start putting in some of the the more the grab bar faucet sink suites, so that when you order your faucet, if you're going to remodel your bathroom, um, you can set it up so the faucet's beautiful. Instead of using uh, towel racks, you can use pretty grab bars, that sort of thing, so that the whole room is safe but yet beautiful. Because I do find with that boomer audience or with anybody, nobody wants their house to look like it it's accessible yeah, and even right. if you're in a wheelchair you don't want people to walk in and say oh this is a wheelchair house you just want them to think it's a beautiful house so that's one thing we do and like for um for the for our clientele our brochures show this is what builder you know this is what other builders do and it's you know ADA it looks like an ADA bathroom and this is what we do and we call ours universal design. And so we win a lot of jobs just by making it beautiful. Well, you know, I would that's very interesting, the distinction you just made. And I, I'd like to talk about that for a second. Actually showing, you know, here's what other builders do and here's what we do. OK, that's part of, you know, what makes you unique. Right. And that's actually one of our question. You know, what what is your unique sales position and how? How are you different, or how do you show yourself being different and adding value compared to your competition? So, what else do you do? Um, well, to make us different, you know, we've got the occupational therapists right on staff. And so, then social agencies like the Area Agency on Aging or different insurance companies, um, life planners. They they like the OT in there. The insurance companies will call us out to help do things because of the OTs, but um, we'll have a lot of times we'll have case managers call us as well, oh, the OT's there, have the OT go out there and tell us what they think, because that way um, we get it right the first time, mm -hmm. and Absolutely. that's always important, but it really, um, as far as working with the, the consumers, you got to make it beautiful. 
And yep. that's what we tell, you know, we do, and that's all we do is universal design. I mean, sometimes we'll do a roof or something like that just because it's part of the, you know, we're out there anyway, they want us to bid that. But um, predominantly, that's what differentiates us is, you know, we're going to go out there, we're going to, this is what we do. We don't do it differently. You know, we don't just do a regular bathroom. We do it universal design. Awesome. Okay. And I really want to say anybody out there working with a the boomer population and the aging in place, which we had talked about is always the best words to use, um, please make it beautiful. Make it beautiful for all of us because – if you're going out there and making things look like a hospital, it gives everybody a bad name. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, that's a good point. And, and, and it's not what the consumer's looking for. You already said that, and it's spot on. Well, proof that you are <laughs> a well-spoken and thoughtful professional. You don't have our script, and yet you are one question ahead of us at all times. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, that's impressive. Um, I, I've got two questions, and Mark, maybe – one before the other, but, um, you know, Mark and I are teach, you're rare, right? You're unique in having both the GC and the OT. Many of us, those industry, the listener is one or the other, right? They're nary, they're remodelers or they're, you know, OT only. And I think they're confused. What, how, what kind of insight can you give those that have their own individual companies just again for the the better good the larger megaphone we're all in this together there's plenty of work learn how to play in the sandbox together what would you tell each of them you mean as far as working together yeah when they are their own company one's a contractor one's an ot we're finding that many times they are struggling with the overlap in what they do and trying to cut the other one out when wouldn't we all be better if they were holding hands and looking at each of their strengths and coming in as a team? Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, but I feel like in our business, a lot of times it's really competitive. And that's where I think there's the, um, the not getting along in the sandbox, as you say. Um, what I find works best is the builders that I work with are my sub they, they subcontract with me, but we're a team. And it's nice because I know they're not going to cut me out of jobs and they know I'm not going to cut them out of jobs. We have contracts between us so that we have, we're able to establish a level of trust. You know, I trust them. They know what I want. I know what they want. And, you know, you get a feel for people when you get to know them, whether or not there's somebody you can work with right. and whether or not you want to develop you know, of relationships with and have a business contract with. So typically, you know, once, once we get to know each other and decide, okay, do we want to work together? We have, we do the, con we have a contract between us and that tells the rules of how it's going to run. So for instance, um, I work with, a, with a, some, a lot of companies that work for the VA. I have agreements with them they, I know what their territory is. I won't work. I won't do any VA work in their territory, and they know that. So if they want to call me in on one of their jobs, they don't have any problems doing that at all. They call me in, and I help them with whatever they want. A lot of times, it's design, you know, how to where the vet, the veteran needs this or that. Mm. Um, but they don't have any worries or concerns at all of me doing anything to stab them in the back because we know we know everything's pretty transparent. We all know where we're coming from. And that makes it easier to play in the sandbox, if you will, because like the bill, the builders that I work with, a lot of times they're really, um, you know, they want to do the, what's right for the consumer, but they really have no desire whatsoever to figure out where a grab bar should be placed mm -hmm. or um, look at how somebody transfers and decide the best way to set up, you know, how to angle the toilet in the bathroom based on the transfers. That's not what they're interested in. They mm -hmm. like it better if I, if they can, if I can, if they just say, Hey, Karen, tell us where you want it and um, we'll make it the way you need it. Although um, I did have one, one of my guys give me a, um, a really fancy stud finder that tells pipes, electrical and everything else. And told me from now on, don't recommend grab bars to you. 
figure out where the studs are. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I do that uh, now. Well, yeah, unless the wall's open and you can block between everything, then you can put wherever you want. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah not always. So I get a little Very trouble true. sometimes. So, again, I know you're you're really unique and you've solved a lot of things that a lot of people are looking for answers to. And in a unique way, what are you doing um, – I guess from a marketing perspective, that tends to be our number one question is kind of marketing. So how do you reach, connect, and engage with older consumers? Or how did you start that and what took hold and resonated with them? Well, um, I'm just sort of getting involved in the aging in place market or the boomer market right now. I've been doing um, people who've been catastrophically injured or working through social agencies. Um, so I do um, I do a lot of auto insurance and workman's comp, oh. but as far as the aging in place market that I have dealt with, it's predominantly through area agency on aging, social services, DHS, Medicaid waivers, that sort of thing, just getting on their lists. Um, I didn't have a lot of money to put into marketing when I first started this, so I didn't want to market to the end users because it's hard. I figured that was a harder market to reach. So who I marketed to and who I continue to market to as we get into the aging in place market a little more are um, case managers and the social agencies, medical case managers, geriatric case managers, um, local hospital rehab department case managers and social workers. Those are the people who know who needs the work. And I find that unless people... I would like it if people would say, I need to remodel my bathroom. I'm going to make it so it's universal design. So if, you know, I get in a car accident or I break my leg, I can hold on to the grab bars, which also look like towel racks. I can, you know, have a low profile shower so I can get in and out or a wet room shower. That's what I would like people to think about. And if I could change the way people think and I think that's something you guys are doing a great thing job of doing is just educating but it'd be nice if everybody thought I got to remodel my bathroom why don't I do it based on principles of universal design so it's accessible it's visitable so if I have people over there and and it's beautiful but um, that's not actually the case people don't usually look for universal design just when they're going to change when they're going to modify a bathroom or update um, right which is something I'd like to change. But the people who are really looking for the aging in place services are the people who have already fell, fallen and hurt, them, hurt themselves. You know, somebody who's got a pain point already. And those people, I think, are best found. Call the OTs. If you're a builder, call the home health OTs. Call the outpatient OTs at the hospitals. Um, they're the ones who know who needs the help and who needs the work. And I've talked to quite a few OTs who've said, when I find a builder who I know can do these things, I give his card out to everybody. Right. And it's, you know, those the OTs are the ones who know, you know they know your market. They know who in the, in the yeah. community needs the help. It's the occupational therapists, you know, Grab onto one, you know, make a get a relationship with an OT. They will br they can bring you clients. That's what I started out doing, just bringing in the clients. And, and Mark, so, you know, that's a really good way to meet the market that you're looking for. Instead of doing a shotgun approach, um, I talked to a, one person who does aging in place predominantly, and he said they spent um, I can't remember some ungodly amount doing radio and TV commercials, and he said we got almost nothing off yep. of that. He said, "Where they, you know, where they start bringing people in is, you know, talking to the case managers at the hospitals, talking to the OTs who are doing home health work in the homes, who say, you know, these people need it, and right. this is who I recommend." Well, you know, it's uh, it's funny that you said that because you're at the position where uh, several, in just in the last month, you know, people that we've talked to or worked with have been, and that is. You know, they've gone the route where they've where they've begun working with customers who are in immediate need, right? And because there's money there. So but it's not enough money to build for the long term. I mean it'll it does well for a while, but eventually if you want to grow, you've got to figure out how to extend that reach and actually get to the people who want to be proactive. And a part of that is educating. 
right? Being committed to education in your community and spreading that word every time you come in contact with somebody about universal design, about, you know, what does it mean to grow older? What, what does it really mean to your life and your lifestyle and all those kind of things, but in a way that is not negative, right? That's not perceived right. negative. So there is, there's an art to that, but I'm glad that you're there because that is a, that is a pivotal point. Right, because that that's indicative of I've outgrown this part of my business. I'm ready to. I should say, you you're ready to grow beyond that part of your business, and that is where the magic will start to happen. Is that commitment to education in your community? And to, if I could, to the you know, I'll be brash. It's usually me that gets to do that. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, to the gen, to the remodeler and to the occupational therapist that are standing on opposite sides of the fence in certain, you know, counties or cities and haven't figured this out. Figure it out. Figure out how to not worry about peeing on your territory, right? I, don't be the dog running the fence perimeter. Yeah. Hold hands. Get in the sandbox. Your project's getting bigger. Your communication gets better. Your clients are better served. And you have leverage, just like Karen said. I mean, come on. Would you rather spend $3,000 on a radio ad or $30 to take somebody out to lunch that has 30 clients you've never met? Give right. me a break, guys. That's that's a no-brainer. Thank mm -hmm. you for saying it. Right. This okay. Good fun. <laughs> I mean, the nice thing about having a business, you work with people you like. And if you don't like them, you don't work with them. That's right. Yeah. There you go. Well, listen, um, why don't you tell us a success a success story uh, for your company? Somebody you've helped, something amazing that you've helped somebody do, et cetera. I mean, you can leave out names, but, you know, be specific. Tell us something that you've helped somebody, how you've helped somebody. Um, well, you know, it's really nice. I, I'm in a really nice position because most of the people that I we do home mods for um, – have had amputations or um, spinal cord injuries or head injuries. And so when we come in, like one guy um, had been living in his living room for four years. Oh. And um, we put an addition on, complete with an elevator and, you know, an accessible bathroom, a, a ceiling lift that he could control himself. All these beautiful, wonderful things. Modified his kitchen so he, could, he was a big hunter and liked to make deer jerky so he could do all that. But it was funny because the thing that he liked most about everything we did in his house was we put a um, motion light in the uh, pantry. <laughs> and so it's that the was little things. the coolest thing. It was the motion light in the pantry, and then we also had one in the entryway when you first came in. Love that. I feel like we put an elevator in for you. We spent all this time, all this money, and you like the motion light. <laughs> but it's funny how the little things, you know, make the world a difference. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to a man who moved into an assisted living facility. I said, what do you like and what don't you like? And he said, "It's I love it. It's a great place. But what I really hate is the um, the toilet paper holders are really hard to work. It's just, it's funny because the devil is in the details. And whether or not somebody likes your project or not, sometimes might not have as much to do with you know, the quality of work, even though you have, I mean, if you have great quality, they don't even think about it. They just expect it. But it's just those little things that just make the world a difference, mm -hmm. which is part of the reason we started, you know, we're, we're working on building this website, Essential Luxuries, is so that people have these sorts of things in their toolbox, so to speak. And we, you know, ultimately we would like to set it up so that builders and OTs who are doing this kind of work can have their own account. So they can just send their clients there. They can look through, you know, for instance, the suite of grab bars that go with different um, faucets. Because, you know, that's always a hassle of trying to get people to, you know, you got to make it all look good. you got to go through all the design sort of things. So that way people can say, go to the, you know, here's, our, here's the website. Go here. Choose what you want. And we'll put it in for you. And you can compare, like, Invisia to Delta to right, right there. Good. Exactly, with different price points. We're still working on that. <laughs> we also, we've got some comfort arms, which I'm really excited about. They're like armrests for the toilet. Yeah. And we had been um, working with a distributor here in the United States, and we sold out his entire, um, his entire, everything he had in his warehouse. Wow. And he said, well, you're the only one who sold this many. I'm not, I'm done with this. And so um, we just worked with the manufacturer, and we 
are importing them now. They get caught in Singapore, so they were supposed to be here at Christmas. They got caught in Singapore, though, so they should be here next week. But um, we've been, you know, looking around the world. We're looking for beautiful things that, you know, are easy to use and that look good in homes because that's one thing, too. As an OT or a builder, you can set yourself apart because you know about these products. Somebody else who's out just doing remodeling, they just know Lowe's. And right. Lowe's doesn't have any. I mean, you know, they got a few, but not they got nothing. I told Mark when I got back from um, from Tokyo at the International Home Health Show, I mean, to our two examples, like Toyota and Honda have 30 choices for the – front seat in the car that goes out and sits on the asphalt while you do a side transfer and then comes back in and you're riding shotgun and because they're one of the oldest nations in the world but so good for you for looking outside the u.s when needed because we're not the oldest some people are further along in the r d side of this from a product perspective so i know mark had another really a fun question for you and i want to make sure we don't take too much of your time so all right um so you know, one of the things that we're really focused on, obviously, here at Booming Your Bottom Line is, and, and the reason why Aaron and I are doing what we're doing is, is we want to empower small business owners to help more people, help them better. You know, obviously, we, we, we believe in, in building a business out of doing good, a successful business, but our main goal is to help them help the people in their communities and, and to be uh, integral to their communities and be supportive of that. Um, so how are you as a company in your companies, how, how are you giving back and, and paying it forward in your own community? Um, my mom has Parkinson's, which um, is of course really close to my heart. Mm -hmm. And so I try out a lot of products on her actually. Her house is <laughs> set up. But, um, <laughs> we do, Parkinson's is our thing. Anybody, Anybody in our area who has Parkinson's, we do free evaluations for. We're active with the Parkinson's support group. Um, we Parkinson's is our thing. So we try to support Parkinson's in any way we can. We also do some home fit sorts of things for ARP, for the older generation. Some of those educational um, presentations for different, different, um, different organizations. But um, really... Parkinson's people in our area get a discount on products and free evaluations and anything they need because I, that's that's our heart. Well, awesome for you. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely it is. And, uh, you know, unbeknownst to us, um, you have to pay it forward because it feels good. But I, I can tell you on the back end that there's – a branding thing going on there that continues to rise you above, right? Um, by being involved in greater goods and bigger causes. So yeah, we, we preach that as well. So Karen, uh, before we let you go today, uh, knowing who our audience is, what is, I don't know, what's your favorite golden nugget? What would you leave somebody with that could move them forward today if they really took it to heart? Um, I think it's really important to collaborate with different people with, 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 with nobody's going to run a business by themselves. If you really want to be successful, you do need to collaborate. You need to find different streams of income and, you know, for the occupational therapists out there who want to do home mod businesses, um, we do have a, I'm part of a group called aim big. Uh, you can find us, um, you can find us on Let's see, AOTA Connections and also on LinkedIn. But AIM Big is um, occupational therapists that are, have home modification businesses that are working together to build income streams and to build their businesses and to crack the whole boomer code because I don't think it's as easy as people think it is. No. So, um, but, you know, for the OTs who are interested in, in working in this arena, they're not going to make it just doing consultations. They need to be a part of the building, too. So I would recommend, you know, meet some of the construction guys in your area. You know, find one that you, you sync with and that you feel an affinity to. You know, put some paper between you, work out an agreement, and start working together. And because as an OT, you know, we all know lots of people who need these 
their home, their homes modified or grab bars or any other little thing like that. We know, we know where those people are and we know what they need. And, um, and if you got a good builder to work with you that you can trust you, that way you have someone to give the jobs to that you know are, is going to do a good job and that you trust and that are going to treat the people with respect because that can be an issue sometimes. And, um, and then you can make a little money too. I, I usually add 25% on what the builders give me and that's how I make money, my money on the builders. And then as far as if I was a builder, I would find an OT because they know my pro, they know, they know my clientele, they know where they are. They already have the ear of your clientele most likely and the clientele, they trust you. They trust the OTs. So you, you know, get a hold of an OT, she knows where your clients are and she knows how to talk to them and where to tell you to put the grab bars because I'll tell you what the guys that I work with like like I said before they don't like having to figure it out they like to their job they build that's what they're good at so it's really a nice way to go and you know as you grow as I've grown I've had a lot of architects that I work with I've got architects now that I sub you know we contract together because we need them for the design so you know, and the other nice thing for the builders, if you get in with the right OT who knows how to bill, you can get paid for some of your bids and whatnot because you can bill through the OT through the OT license. Wow, that is great That's advice. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's so many. There's so it's such a nice. I hear what you're saying about fighting in the sandbox, but it's such a nice way to just you got so much more power and so much more potential working mm -hmm. together. Right. Thank you for saying that. Well, listen, um, you've been a great guest. We're just Thank so you. thrilled to have you here. Um, we really appreciate you taking the time to you know, talk to us and, and let our listeners benefit from your insight and your experience. Um, so great job. We, we really, really appreciate it. Thank you. It's been fun. It's nice knowing you guys. I'm glad, glad to know you. It's been an well, honor to be on the show. I'll take you up on it when Mark and I get to Chicago for some conference. We expect to be on Lake Michigan. So. Yeah, we'll take you sailing. <laughs> awesome. That's, that's a fun part. Beautiful. Well, I'd love to be taught by somebody as talented as you. So, well, everybody, thank you for tuning in today. That was, boy, fantastic information. And proof positive, you guys, that, you know, Karen spent years building a business that's now really making a difference. And, Seeing where things took her from a growth perspective, what she needed to do to fill holes. And so I hope you listened and, you know, listen again or take notes or take her advice. Take this back into your community because our goal for all of you is to build your own business. So right. before we get out of here today, I do want to let you know about a brand new workshop we're doing. It's a virtual training on a proven five-step marketing system to get the best boomer customers and high, highest profits for your small business. In that program, we're going to outline the exact steps in the marketing system that we teach. If you're interested in that, go over to boomingyourbrand.com. And uh, that's it for me, Mark. Want to wrap it up? Right. Well, we hope you enjoyed this episode of Owner's Chat and that you're leaving a little more inspired today. Again, don't forget to go to boomingyourbrand.com and take part in that free workshop that we put together. Thank you for listening. And until next time, be well, be bold, and boom your bottom line.